On today's show, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Valaton GP200LT multi effects processor. Stay tuned. It seems like every day there's a new multi effects unit coming out and it's a beautiful time for anybody that enjoys multi effects units like I do because there's a host of advantages you can get out of these little units. Namely, you can save a sack full of money and get some great sounding effects, cabinets, amplifiers, all in one easy to use package. And if you're playing with a band, plugging one of these things into a FR, FR speaker system really makes your life a whole lot easier. So Valaton has introduced the G P 200 LT, which is a light version of their predecessor multi effects unit, which had more buttons and a foot switch. So they simplified things, but they left all of the goodness in this little unit. And I've been using this unit now for quite a few weeks and I really got familiar with it and I'm enjoying it extremely well because not only is it offering great flexibility and functionality, it also offers great tones. Yes, it's fully featured. It offers everything including 140 amp simulations, 100 pedals, if that's not enough, I don't know how many pedals you'll need, uh, 200 cabinets, 180 second looper drum machine, the ability for a movable effects chain so you can reorganize your pedals no matter what preferences you may have, you can find the right configuration. And um, of course, there's a built-in effects loop in the back so that if those effects that are built into the unit are not enough. You could actually take one of your favorite pedals and put it into the effects loop and use that as well. All in one small, easy to use, easy to navigate enclosure. One of the first things that I look at when I'm evaluating a multi effects unit like this is its durability. Is the enclosure made of plastic? Is it made of aluminum or metal? Will it withstand gigging and rehearsing on a regular basis? Nobody wants to invest in a multi effects unit that's going to fall apart on you. This one definitely feels quality. It has a nice weight to it. The chassis is made of a really nice metal. You can see here in the bottom as well and the top. Good quality switches. They all have LED lights to light them up. The knobs feel good. And the screen is large enough and color for you to easily see what you're doing even in a dark environment. The next thing that catches my attention is obviously the array of ins and outs that are built into the unit because if you don't have the right ones, you're kind of stuck. This one offers all of the goodies you would expect including a USB-C input and output so you can plug this into your computer and use the software that comes bundled with it. You have a out and through MIDI and an in MIDI port in the back of this as well. Uh, your usual balanced output, so you have your left mono and your right. Headphone input, auxiliary output, you have a send and receive effects loop as well as your usual guitar or instrument uh, input and you have um, expandable foot switches here, two of them so you can connect either a, um, you know, a foot switch to click between patches or you can put in an expression pedal and use it as your volume pedal or your wah because there's nothing included with the unit. Now with a combination of 140 amp simulations, uh, 100 pedals and a host of patches, you can save up to 100 user patches or play around with the 100 or so factory patches. If I had to demo every single sound in this unit, it would take at least an hour. So we're not going to do that today, but I'm going to show you what the software interface looks like. I'm going to show you more or less what you can do with that. We'll demo a couple of little sounds just so I can give you a little teaser of what to expect from the unit. And I'm going to tell you what I like about it and what can be improved. All right, guys. So I hope you're ready to go. I have my Gibson Les Paul waiting in the wings here. We're going to be playing through some sound samples 
and I'm going to be showing you a quick overview of the software that comes bundled with the Valaton, the GP200L. Hopefully you've already downloaded it, so you're ready to follow along. I also have a view here of the unit in case uh, you know you want to see what the actual physical unit is doing. But most of the action is going to happen right here on this part of the screen where we're going to be going through uh, the settings and sounds. All right, so let's get started. We're going to start off by looking at where all the patches live, and that is right here on the right hand side of your screen. You're going to be seeing a lot of patches we can actually scroll down these patches you'll notice one is highlighted this happens to be this one here that we're on but if you scroll down scroll 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 keep scrolling there's a lot of factory default patches that you can edit and save um, and then after that there's a whole bunch more of empty slots that you can use to create your own masterpieces save them there recall them share them with your friends export them do whatever you wish. Now, because there's so many patches, it sometimes becomes a little overwhelming. How do you find what you're looking for, you know, when you're clicking around here? Well, there's a couple of ways that they've solved that problem, and I like the way they've managed it. You can actually go here and click on some um, styles. So for example, if you're looking at only rock sounds, you could click on that and lo and behold, only the rock sounds or the sounds categorized as rock come up. So you can narrow down or filter your searches that way. Uh, now, let's say you're looking for something specific and you don't, you know, you don't remember what it is exactly, but you, you kind of remember it had the word dizzy in it. So you can actually uh, search. You can just click and there you go, you have a sound sample called Dizzy Devil. It happens to be a metal patch right over here. We can click on that and hear what that sounds like. So the Dizzy Devil patch sounds something like this. <laughs> sounding metal patch if I do say so myself so what does this mean okay we've selected a patch now what well the information relating to that patch will appear here in the center portion of your screen and you'll see information there right now what does that mean well this information is related to what you've clicked down here and this if you haven't already figured it out is the signal chain so from left to right you have a whole bunch of pedals available at your disposal everything from a noise reduction pedal volume a pre a wah distortion amp cab eq modulation delay and reverb now they're not always all on they're going to be uh, either on or off depending on what you've selected and, and how you choose to use your sounds you can tell which ones are on because they're in color the ones that are shadowed out in this case the distortion pedal is off the modulation is off the delay pedal uh, is off here you can see you can still click them but they're not actually activated all right so now if we wanted to get information as to what it is that we're playing how do we get that well, if we click on the amplifier, we can see right now that we're using an amp called the Diz VH Plus S or TS, uh, which basically is based on the diesel amp, the VH4. And it's really cool that they've included some wiki style information here. So if you don't really know what you're playing, you're not really sure, it clarifies things for you. And they do the same for the cabinet. Uh, they do the same for the pedals, depending on what you're using here. Um, you know, so you're never really left wondering um, what you're playing. So if you want to modify things, in this case, let's say we want to modify the reverb and we want to put something a little bit bigger. Let's say we want to go uh, hall. We can click that. You can see the pedals here. We can uh, modify the mix, the pre-delay, the decay. Let's hear what it sounds like with that option turned on now. Oh, of course, rookie mistake, you gotta turn on the volume of your guitar first. So you can hear it's a much bigger type of delay. You can play around with the mix and make things really crazy. You can even go to church 
and simulate. <laughs> make it sound nice and fat. Uh, of course, if you want to add a little bit of delay, you can do that by turning on your de delay pedal here. The delay that's being selected here is called the pure delay. So let's hear what that sounds like. Now, if the sync button is turned on, you will notice something. If I go to the actual physical unit here, I can change the delay, make it quicker by tapping quicker there, or make it slower by tapping slower. So the sync button syncs up the tap pedal here, the tap, um, the, the tap uh, switch to the effects unit. Now you don't have just one uh, delay pedal at your disposal. If you scroll down the list here, you have a lot of different pedals and it doesn't necessarily have to, um, you know, be uh, this one. You can choose a tube delay, ring echo. You know, if we choose a ring echo, what does that sound like? Let's hear it. So you do hear it has like more of a crunchy, fizzly thing happening at the end of it. If we want to go with a vintage rack, let's hear what that sounds like. An extended... You can do a lot with this little unit and it's surprising just how much you can actually do. So uh, let's go back to the effects chain here. One of the things that I really like is that you can swap things around. So if you wanna have, let's say you wanna turn on your modulation effect, but you wanna have your delay before it, uh, you can do that. Simply just drag and drop your effects. If you want to take the EQ and put it after the delay, you can do that too. You can turn it on and off, whatever you wish, and really tailor all of your sounds and settings any way you want to do it. Uh, and it's really surprising just how much you can squeeze out of a little inexpensive unit like this. Now, one of the things I wanted to actually point out to you guys, and it's something that a lot of people may have missed, so I want to just show you that. Let me just select another sound sound sample here, we'll choose rock. Um, and because I have Dizzy in the search queue here, I gotta, I gotta get rid of that or else it won't um, allow me to see all of the rock settings here. So let's look at something called Love of God and uh, let's just hear what that sounds like. <laughs> A nice usable rock sound. Um, let's say we want to make it better. Now, how do you do that? If you go into your stock settings, normally you don't have everything optimized. And I'm going to show you a little trick that you'll thank me for later. Go to the top of your screen, hit the little um, wrench icon. In here you have the global settings that you can play around with. You can have uh, there's a whole bunch of them here. But the one I want to bring your attention to is global EQ, which is one, two, three, four selections down. All right. You'll notice that I have a global EQ enabled here. By default, you don't. Right? So by default, you have a flat EQ. This is actually turned off. And what that does is it gives you your sound uh, something like this. Now on its own, doesn't sound bad, but if you optimize your EQ, it'll sound like this. So in my opinion, much better sounding EQ, uh, warmer, and it sounds more like a real amp. Um, so what 
The reason I do this is because I get rid of the muddiness at the low end. I get rid of the fizz at the top end. Sometimes it just gets too spiky, too fizzy. doesn't sound good. doesn't sound realistic. The sounds that a guitar likes is usually in the mids. And if you basically tailor your sound, you can get a much more realistic, usable tone. So I highly recommend you guys look at this from the get-go, set it the way you like it, and you'll be much more happy with the overall performance of the little unit. I turn it on and leave it on, and I'm happy that they give you that functionality. All right, now one of the other things I wanted to just quickly touch upon is maybe some cleaner sounds. So let's go to some of the, I don't know, the indie type sounds. I'm just uh, selecting things kind of randomly here. I don't really know what it is. So I'm gonna click, click on this, which says, um, where am I? And this is uh, based on a silver twin. Uh, so let's look at, let's listen to what this is by default. I'm not really sure. It'll be a surprise for me, just as it is for you. <laughs> So you have a whirble effect in there. It's not necessarily totally clean. You do have a little bit of distortion happening. So let's clean things up by getting rid of all the stuff we don't need. Get rid of the distortion. Let's get rid of the modulation. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll keep the delay. Let's just see what that sounds like. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna change the delay here from deep C reverb to something maybe a little bit uh, more palatable. Let's go to studio and see what that gives us. That sounds much better already. So you already have a nice, clean, usable sound here. If we want to introduce some dirt, we can. We can turn on the distortion pedal. This is a super overdrive pedal, not necessarily my favorite. Let's go with um, a screamer here and see what that gives us. Um, now the gain is not extremely high, so we'll actually turn up the gain, turn down the volume. Sounds nice. So a much, you know, with a little tweak, you can get a, a, a relatively unusable indie sound and turn it into something nicer. Now, if we wanted to uh, put in a vibrato effect, I like the uh, vibratos. I think those look, you know, play nice with a clean sound. So let's just uh, see what that sounds like. <laughs> So instead of using the vibrato, let's go with something else. Let's use the uh, V Roto and we'll hit the sync button here and see what that sounds like. A very subtle sound. Uh, let's go with something a little bit more crazy. Let's go with the vibe. This is a vibe phaser, so let's hear what that sounds like. Now this is uh, using a chorus mode, maybe we can use the vibrato mode here and see what that sounds like. And of course, if we sync it, we can click on the tap tempo, maybe give it a little bit of a longer. And if we turn off the distortion, A 
very nice, very usable type of effect. Let's go into one more and then we're going to wrap it up because it's getting rather long. Let's go into a, let's go into a pop. See what they have here. Um, love yourself. Let's see what that's all about. Uh, I click on the app, Foxy. 30 TB based on the Vox AC30. So I guess it's gonna be more of a, a bright sounding type of thing. Let's hear what that sounds like. Wow, it actually has a lot more gain than I would have expected. I thought it would be, um, you know, a clean sounding thing. But here we have the character set to hot, so we can set that to cool. We can pull down the gain quite a bit and see if we can get things to clean up a little bit. Of course, we'll have to put up the volume a little bit more. Let's try one more. Slow dancing. Slow dancing is based on a dark twin, and which is a, a Fender uh, 65 twin reverb. All right, so let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> Let's see if we can dirty this one up. Turn on the distortion. Sounds nice. You're using a spring reverb here. Slap back delay. The chorus is off, but you're... Uh still driving that amp a little bit with the distortion which happens to be a blues overdrive which is basically a boss blues driver all right so you have a lot of great things happening with this particular software you can do a lot with it you can optimize your sounds you can use it for recording purposes live scenarios so much at your fingertips we didn't even get into the looper or the drum machine We'll save that for another time. Now, out of the box, this unit does offer a lot of factory presets. It's interesting to note that they do offer some really nice high gain sounds as well as medium and clean sounds. And I'm a sucker for clean sounds. I think if a multi effects unit can produce good quality clean sounds, you know it's going to do well in the high gain as well because I find good, clean, realistic sounding sounds are harder to produce and do well than high gain sounds where all the distortion and uh, gain is masking the foundation of the tone of the uh, unit and the guitar. So this one has some really nice sounds. I think it's very easy to dial in some additional sounds based on the factory presets. So you should have plenty of slots to cover all of your bases. Now I gotta say that the competition for these companies putting out these multi effects units is getting quite fierce. There's a lot of competition out there. They all kind of do the same thing and play in the same area. So there's a lot of choice. So you want to make sure they're choosing the correct one. The big advantage, in my opinion, are the price points. They're getting more and more affordable and they're offering more and more effects and functionality. I like this unit a lot. I think the sounds are great. It does a lot. It does it well and I'm very pleased with this little unit. So I'm giving the Valton GP200 LT my stamp of approval. I'm giving it my thumbs up. It does a very respectable job. Definitely punches above its weight class, especially at this price point. So I don't think anybody that is looking to get a good, very usable unit at a very affordable price could go wrong. Pick one up or check one out for yourself. I think you'll be pleased. We need your subscriptions to continue doing what we do best, and that's gear reviews. So please hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you won't miss out on all the great future reviews.